Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about our key lawyers and invasion of privacy. Yeah. Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And today, as we discussed, we're going to talk about our key loggers and an invasion of privacy, kind of different aspects of it. And, you know, with the auto hotkey, it's one of the things we see a lot of them on the forum is key loggers. And uh, I think, you know, there's some pros and cons to them. Uh, one of the first bullets you say is like, hey, you know what? If if you're an employer, um, you're paying the people, you know, for their time. Shouldn't you be able to monitor everything that they're they're doing and have a record of it? Yeah, I'm... I'm it's one of those big things, right? Can can the company read your emails and all those different things? And and sure enough, uh, at least from from my experience, we we have freedom with responsibility, so to speak. So so you're allowed to use a small percentage of your day on on whatever uh, private things. You could probably log into your bank account and, and check your balance or something like that. And Sure enough, people wouldn't feel comfortable with the company then having locked whatever uh, thing you did to get there. But other than that, I, I'm, I'm, I'd say, yeah, the company is paying for your time. So as long as they make it clear that they might be locking you, I, I don't see a real issue with it. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, which leads us into the next one, which I don't know if you want to grab that, but it was some of what you talked about there. Yeah, uh, it's everything you do at work, something they own, which, of course, as you said yourself, covers a bit of what I say. Uh, it, it truly does depend on when and where and stuff like that. And I don't know where it works everywhere, but uh, at least here, our lunch breaks are our own. Um Am I allowed to use company property like the computer in my free time? Yeah, within reason I am. Are they then allowed to log me while I'm using company property on my own time? Again, it, it's it's kind of a gray area. Yeah, and I I would say here in the states it it's um. It's more of a thing of it's very, very common, especially, you know, because we're talking to people, if you have a computer, you're not doing, uh, you're not doing, uh, working on the roofs, you know, putting in, you're not doing manual labor, right? You're using a computer and therefore it's probably not, generally speaking, a 40 hour work week. Some are, of course, but a lot of them aren't. And often people who have a computer take it home and work in off regular, you know, nine to five hours and, you know, most people, this is my philosophy, but most, I think most businesses and people do this as well and say, Hey, if I'm going to be working crazy hours all the time, I'm going to, if I spend a little bit of time in the middle of the day to look at Facebook or to do this or that, that's okay. Cause I'm more than making up for it for doing other stuff and I'm available to the company at all hours. So yeah, the, um, I think it's, it's fair to say it, it, they, um, you can do stuff on your own, you know, um, you can use the computer for, and it is a policy for the work, right? You can use it, but um, you, I definitely think you're right also of like, should you expect privacy? Probably not. <laughs> um, more to this point. No, and the, the, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and I'd say absolutely the thing about should you expect privacy? Probably not, right? They're, they're allowed to log whatever you do, I, I'd say. The problem is how much they're monitoring it. Um, I have an example from work where there are these, I don't remember what they're called, but maybe low jacks or something, you know, GPSs in the company cars. So while people are actually moving around out in town um doing whatever pieces of work they're doing, the company could actually be monitoring if they're at work locations and how long they're there and stuff like that. But it's not used to monitor employees, or at least not from what I know. But if a dispute happens, mm -hmm. if uh, it's been used a few times to disprove parking tickets, it's been 
used a few times where employees have uh, misused the freedom they have to go home or stuff like that. So it it goes both ways. No, and let's expand our, our topic just briefly here for a moment, because I think you bring up a good point of let's talk about surveillance cameras out in society and and I, I'm a very, you know, I like to protect, even though I'm a very open person, I like to protect my privacy in a lot of ways. But I do like to have, um, to some expect, I do like the CCTV type stuff. I see much more in, like, in England. I think they have a lot more than here in the States and, and access to it. But they don't mm-hmm. necessarily have someone, like, in the CIA or NASA scanning it at all hours, you know, looking at everything and dissecting it and everything. But Hey, when there's a burglary or when there's a rape or something, they can go back and look at it. Um, it's, it, but you know, here's the thing is you, you should have some sort of a, um, what's it called? Um, a court to say, uh, a warrant to go look at it, right? It shouldn't be accessible to everybody for anybody whenever they want to look at the stuff. Um, same thing with your business. Yeah. I, you logger. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I'd say I, I heard, uh, I don't know if it, uh, it was an official program documentary, whatever it was, where someone around a table, actually, they were living in China and apparently had gotten a jaywalking ticket from CCTV. So that might be over the level of what I would be comfortable with. You know, actually, that's a good point is uh, here in Texas. Uh, it, it was a couple of years ago now, but they, they outlawed the red light traffic cams for, for quite a while. We had, mm-hmm. I, I actually got a ticket from one. And anyway, I don't have to go into the specifics, but I'm like, I didn't feel it was really, I should have got a ticket for what I did. But anyway, um, but, but in Texas, we outlawed them. Now the other states, they still allow, a lot of states allow them. Uh, but it, it, to me, it is a bit of like, you know, and I, and I honestly, I see both sides of, hey, you see some blatant stuff going on and, and, you know, those people should be in some way punished, but, yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah go ahead. No, I, I will allow you to take the next one. Okay, yeah. So um, the next one is, though, is to realize there's some benefit um, as well, you know, as what could cause you pain, um, which actually I guess we just covered a bunch of the benefits of you can use them to prove you were, or at least your vehicle or your computer was where you were, you know, when you said you were. Uh, often, though, uh, and try not to laugh, but I always thought it's too bad that, uh, if, do you know who Columbo is? He's a detective, a, a TV detective. Yeah. Um, I always wanted, you know, to me, with what we do with Auto Hotkey, you know, it would have been a good crime, you know, story to have someone have an alibi that they were sitting at the computer doing the stuff. Look, I sent these emails. I did these things, but it's all automated, you know, because we can automate things, right? Um, with almost almost no log, um, which so we'll have to put that on our things of the benefits of auto hotkey. You can <laughs> commit crimes and have no log of it. Um, You could probably get around some key loggers at least with with some of the stuff you could do, but yeah, yeah, we've seen key loggers made that well way way. At, we've seen key loggers made without a hot key as well, um, but yeah, yeah, it is. I, I'm not sure the, when it benefits you. Sure, um, when it benefits the company, that's. Most of the time, probably a good thing, yeah. um, because if if the company uses what they log for something um, like people committing fraud or logging into areas they're not supposed to, or using their entire day on private stuff and or whatever it might be, sure. It might actually benefit you because the company can get rid of the dead weight or reprimand the people who are using their time wrong or yeah stuff like that. So I can give a specific example where I, it wasn't a keylogger, but um, I had a a boss who I who I I was bumping heads with, and he he wanted to go to HR, and I'm like that's fine, and uh, he was saying that uh, all the stuff uh, he had told me that, um, you know, what I proposed was preposterous. It was a big deal and I should be fired. And I'm like, he had sent me an email 
back several months before saying, hey, you know, this happened. He literally wrote, it's not a big deal. So, but hey, next time, take blah, blah, blah. And so, of course, the thing is, I, I kept all of my email and, you know, and I had, I remembered it, went through, printed it out, highlighted it. So I'm at that meeting with HR and he just goes off and saying how I warned you, how dangerous this was. Well, I'm like, well, and I whip it out and I, I, you know, show it to him. And anyway, it was, you know, he got a little upset, but it was funny. And thankfully I had covered my own butt, uh, but, you know, it, it definitely is, if that's a record, you'd be able to go back and actually prove, you know, this is what had happened at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's weird how stuff like that is, right? Um, should I take the next one? You yeah, you go for it. Yeah. The log could be used to learn what to automate. And and that's one of the things that we've had up multiple times, right, Joe? Um, having stuff like that log, because people often don't see it themselves. Um, if, let's say, companies did get, uh, let's say, a little brother who was some kind of AI that could actually sort through logs like this, uh-huh. or just logs for yourself, you could make a key logger and try and find similarities or words you kept typing or uh, sentences or all kinds of different things. We had that uh, webinar back when, when we were seeing about deep learning and mm-hmm. how you could do some of that stuff about a hot, a hot key. You could probably build something pretty advanced to try and help you figure out if some of the stuff you did warranted it being automated. Well, I, I read an article the other day. Um, it was, and I didn't, I didn't appreciate, I didn't like the script that they had written, but it was one that um, I had found because I've been running Google search that you know tells me when there's new auto hotkey news, and uh, they had a an activity monitor, so it didn't log your keystrokes, but every let's say two minutes or so, it would go look at the active program you're in and log, and and it helped you keep track of hey where you're spending your time, right? And and I wrote John from Quick Access Pop Up and said hey, this might be a cool thing for you to build into QAP to allow people to say, hey, if you want it, turn it on. And then you might want to build over time, you would see what people, what programs are in a lot and say, hey, you might want to, hey, this one in you're in so much, you want to create a hot key and a hot string to launch it. This one you're in enough where it really should be in your menu, you know, type of thing. And um, I'm like, I, I do see the value of that, right? And and having some sort of a, and it's not a key logger, but it's still tracking the applications you're in you know, without being so nitty gritty of your actual keystrokes. Yeah, exactly. I'd, I'd say that would probably be a great addition to QAP if he were able to build it within a reasonable time frame or uh, at a, actually pull out stuff that um, people found beneficiary. Because absolutely, if you could give recommendations to your users in that manner, uh, it's probably hard to do absolutely right, but if you do it um, not consistently enough, but toned down enough to just offer up these suggestions from time to time, people would probably just see it as, a, oh, nice, yeah, that's right. Well, and you and I have talked about this a lot in that in the we and we're you know huge auto hockey users. We still regularly find things that we're still doing that we should have automated years ago that we still do. And you're like, oh, I didn't realize how much time I was spending doing this at regular things. And and this is one of the things I think something like that would help. It's like, hey, once every other week, you know, let me see where I've spent most of my time and which files, which programs, you know, um, and and it can help you understand of like, oh man, I didn't realize I was doing this as much. I really should find a, either, either, and, and I know you have a script from years ago that did this. Either I need to write it, not this one. I need to write a script on how to launch this faster so I'll make it more convenient. Or this is the one you had was, I need to be able to block that. I want to block Facebook mm-hmm. access, you know, for three hours because I can't help myself. So I'm going to build a tool that will stop me from doing this. Exactly. So there's a lot of stuff you could learn uh, or a log could help you with, both as a, as a company, but also as an employee. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, absolutely. I, yeah, I, 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 think, I think an aspect that we didn't discuss yet and that should be brought into this conversation is who has access to what and, you know, at when do they have that kind of access and how granular? Because I could see how, it, you know, like we're just mentioning here with the QAP idea, employers could have a key logger that would allow you to look at what you've done, right? And and that should be, that should always be available. Um, and then maybe your direct superior um, and, and you know, on certain things, they can't see, let's say, every program and every keystroke, but they can see the programs and the titles of the programs. So like if you see Facebook, you know, 40 hours a week, right, unless you work in social media, um, you know, that, that would probably be bad. Uh, but yeah, it, but they couldn't, they shouldn't be able to see every keystroke you do because maybe I go to my checking account and, and do something, you know, on my work computer. And that, as we talked about earlier, is probably okay. Uh, but yeah, they shouldn't be able to see that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and th that's where you could probably use uh, other pieces of uh, automation or software or whatever you'd call that. Uh, I, I was leaning towards calling it some kind of AI, but yeah, just something that actually looked at the logs throughout the company or whatever um, to give insight might be all that it actually needed to do uh, into um, and and there could probably be a blacklist and a whitelist and uh, other different types of stuff like that. So or parameters for what you actually want to follow. Do you want to see if people are typing the exact same thing or do you want to right. see if they're looking at the exact same window or do you want to see if they're pinging the if ethernet all the time or whatever different types of behavior people are having. And that's at least something that could be worth locking. And if you remove the human aspect of actually looking through it, it's probably more ethical. If if it's just, um, uh, for the most part, uh, anonymized, you know, right, where a computer looks at everybody's thing and then summarizes it so it doesn't actually say, this guy over here did it. It knows that it would right. be that yeah. guy, but in, in, in the what the human sees, it's at least at the, the front end, um, pretty um, anonymized. You know, that's interesting. Is, is of course it would be tricky in an HR way, but you could have direct supervisors who have at least, let's say, three employees. There, the information is rolled up to an aggregate of their employee summary. You know, of, of hey, your employees did this, but we don't say which ones did what. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I know from our uh, different types of, um, we get these surveys quite often throughout the year. How is your mental health? How is your physical uh, workstation frame type of thing? How is the, how do you feel about the company's vision or whatever it might be? different types of surveys and um, the uh, immediate managers or team leaders or section leaders or whatever only actually see the summary if they have five or more people on the job because everything less than that almost makes it right it, yeah, don't know. It's, it's, yeah. yeah it's two percent yeah, don't know so, so if you're a team leader with three people under you, you won't get a summarize. Um, but your section leader, who might have three team leaders with three people under them, right. will. Right. So it, it goes up a step that way. So, and, yeah. and real quickly here, um, when I was talking to John the other day, we we had this conversation. He's working on a on a new tool that will allow you to manipulate your clipboard memory, uh, and and automatically mm -hmm. apply some rules. This and that. It sounds interesting. But during that conversation, we wrapped up, and then after it, he, we were talking about the Windows history tool in Windows 10. I'm sorry, clipboard history tool in Windows 10. And uh, from that, he discovered where it's being stored on your computer in a SQLite database. Unfortunately, it only stores like the last 50 things. So, but of course, we could monitor your. I, I loved your idea when you said earlier, monitor what was even on your clipboard and look for common things going to your clipboard. That's a what a great simple way to. 
to say, hey, I should have a hot key or a hot string for this because I'm constantly putting this thing in the clipboard. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Well, hopefully uh, you guys enjoy that. If you have different opinions on what should be, um, if we should have loggers or not, uh, you know, write in here and ask. If you guys have them at your your work, I'm very interested if you guys have them and how you feel about them. Yeah. Yeah, what level they are at. All right. Good talking, Jackie. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. Bye.